today we are going to talk about the concept of the habitat and niche before moving on to the lecture it is my request to you all to please like and subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates <clears throat> habitat when we say a place under which an individual or species is biologically adapted to live in. Each habitat provides various niches. Competitors can coexist in the same habitat but have separate niches. Now, when we talk about a habitat, it is basically the place of an organism where organism lives comfortably and where various niches are present can be present so that it can reduce the competition among different species for example in this very picture what we are seeing that this is one habitat the whole place is a one habitat but the organisms had divided it into different niches so as to reduce the competition among themselves for example this very flamingo it feed by straining the mud through their bill jabbling ducks feed on the plants avocets feed on the insects oyster catchers prey on the shells and plovers hunt for the small insects Though all these species of the birds are living in the same habitat, but they have reduced the competition, competition by occupying different niches. Now, one concept is there for that what is a microhabitat? When we say the small area of intensive use within a habitat of an organism, it is said to be a microhabitat. For example, it uh, a place where the ant ant hill is present it is a micro habitat within a big habitat it is a it is a rotting log of the wood wherein this salamander is present and salamander is living here and this this very log of the wood is a small habitat or micro habitat of the organism for example, on this very tree, what we are seeing, the place of the nest, it is a microhabitat where the bird is spending its most of its time or the intensive use. Now, then what is niche? As the students of the life science, we usually give answer that habitat is the organism's address and niche is its profession. And ecologically, nature tends to fill all the niches with communities so as to reduce the competition among the among different species. Now, for example, in this very picture, what we are seeing, we are seeing that if this this very tree is a habitat, is a habitat, then these three wabblers, what they have done, they have di diversified themselves into different niches. For example, if we talk about this very Cape May wabbler, if we talk about this very Cape May wabbler, this very um, wabbler has occupied the top most layer, top most portion of this very habitat that is a spruce tree what has what is done by the bay breasted wabbler this very wabbler has occupied the middle portion of this very habitat and the yellow rumped wabbler this very yellow wabbler wabbler has occupied the bottom or the lower most uh, portion of this very habitat and thus they have reduced their competition by diversifying themselves into different niches of a particular habitat now let us let us um, explain all these very things that what is a habitat habitat is derived from the word which means habitat or haber which means to inhabit or to hold this term was derived from these two latin words habitat or haber in 1755 this the kind of the place under which an animal or species is biologically adapted to live habitat is a set of the place of environmental conditions in which 
particular organism lives and adapts to the situation accordingly for example i usually tell my students that we cannot the habitat is a place where organism lives comfortably for example a polar bear cannot uh, cannot uh, be comfortable in the zones near to that of the equator so the polar region is the habitat of the polar bear whereas there are there are the animals such as such as the um, kiwis they are the particular they, their particular particular hab, habitat the, their comfortable place is new zealand whereas that of the kangaroos their um, their particular place their <coughs> the place where they are adapted to live in is australia so different animals have the different place places where for which they are adapted to live the fish cannot come out of the water because the um, water is the habitat of a fish similarly an organism for which it is adapted to live it is the habitat of an organism many of the organisms they live in different kinds of habitats for example some live in temperate some live in tropical some some live in fresh water some live in marine water some live in estuarine water some live in grasslands some live in deserts so the different organisms have different kinds of the habitats so the place or area where the particular species lives is the habitat a habitat is a part and is considered as the real place of the ecosystem now there are the factors which play an important role uh, for the organism to live in that very particular habitat or a particular habitat is affected or is <clears throat> dependent on the various factors that can be physical that can be biological the factors like sunlight average rainfall annual temperature type of the soil present abiotic factors may affect the presence of the organisms and traits in that very environment these factors help in determine determining determining the particular type of species suited for that very environment so we can also say that habitat is the nutrient or energy providing area for all types of organisms irrespective of the kind of the species so habitat is actually a place from where the organism derives its nutrient derives its energy now we they, it is irrespective of what kind of species are present the species can be of different kinds but they should be adapted to live in that very place habitat defines as a field where all living organisms live in the natural environment and reflect their way of living the pond river ocean is the best example of the habitat as many organisms are found in the same place or habitat these habitats can be arboreal terrestrial aerial aquatic as i told you now what kind of habitats are there for the organism to live in there are different kinds of habitats but the terrestrial and the aquatic habitat they are the main habitats under which different categories of the habitats are classified are divided for example if we talk about the terrestrial habitat terrestrial habitat is divided into forest grassland wetlands and desert whereas aquatic habitat is divided into three main types that is marine water or salt water brackish water and fresh water when we talk about the aquatic habitat and when we talk about the marine water marine water um, <clears throat> marine water has a salt concentration more than 35 ppm whereas the fresh water has a salt negligible salt concentration whereas in the case of brackish water it has a salt concentration in between that of the marine and the fresh water it means for rightly from the 1 ppm up to the 35 parts per million so if it if we talk about the aquatic ecosystem or aquatic habitat the aquatic habitat if we talk more, mostly of the marine habitat marine habitat is further divided into different kinds of the its different zones or we can say different other minor habitats for example the zone which is near the bank it is called as the littoral zone or it is also called as the nereidic zone 
the open water area open water area away from the mainland it is called as the pelagic zone now on the basic uh, basis of the light it can also be divided into the photic zone up to 200 meter it is called photic zone so it is also called as a dysphotic zone and the aphotic zone the dysphotic zone is uh, mainly um, classified many a times that wherever there is little bit of intensity of the light whereas aphotic zone where there is no intensity of the light reaches are no light um, light area it is called as the aphotic zone now this very pelagic zone can also be divided into the epipelagic zone then mesopelagic zone uh, that is up to 200 meter it is epipelagic zone then from 200 meter to 1000 meter it is categorized as mesopelagic zone then 1000 meter up to 4000 meter it is called as bethypelagic zone then 4000 meter uh, up to 10,000 meter it is called abyssopelagic zone and there are certain uh, certain depths in the oceans which we call it as the hadal depths even the organisms are found there so we do have why i am telling you all this that because the marine habitat is divided into different zone and each and every zone has a particular kind of organism living in this very area that is particularly adapted to live in those very zones for example, there are bottom dwellers, there are deep sea fishes, there are cave dwelling fishes, they cannot come out of the cave. They cannot come out to the epipelagic zone, but they are they are mostly um, adapted to live in the um, in the hadal depths, in the in, in the dark environment, in in the aphotic zone. So those very organisms such as planktons are the uh, or certain you can say epipelagic nectons. They are present on the upper surface of the water. They cannot go down. They cannot bear the uh, pressure of the water up to this very depth. So each and every organism has a particular habitat, a particular microhabitat within a habitat. So if we say that whole uh, fresh, um, this very water ecosystem is one habitat, then it is divided into smaller ecosystems. If uh, say marine uh, marine um, habitat it can be divided into its further zones or further microhabitats and the further um, you can say zones. So each and every organism is adapted to live in these very zones. So then we do have the certain extreme habitats, extreme habitats. Now you must have heard about the hot thermal geysers and uh, there, there are, there are many um, such hot thermal geysers um, in the, um, in the ocean floors as well or in the form of the hillocks from where these uh, volcanic eruptions do come out or many a times you have you must have heard that most of the active volcanoes are under the sea so many a times these some of the organisms are adapted to live in those very places where the temperature never never gets below 200 degrees centigrade so there are certain place certain animals which live uh, and uh, which feed on the ooze coming out of these very geysers coming out of these very you can say cracks we call them as the thermal cracks so what we see we see bacterial filaments scale worms limpets tube worms sea spiders they are adapted to or snails many times and tube worms they are adapted to live in these kinds of the extreme habitats we do have the estuarine habitat where there are particular kind of the fishes which are adapted to live in a, in a salt concentration which is in between that of the uh, marine water and that of the fresh water then talking about the fresh water freshwater habitat the uh, the organisms living in the freshwater they cannot move uh, to the marine habitat because they are not adapted to tolerate such a huge quantity of the salt because it becomes difficult for them to to undergo such a such a kind of the osmoregulation to maintain the this very osmotic balance in their body by getting into the into the maximum amount of the salt concentration because their body is not adapted to live in the marine environment but yes there are certain fishes or certain organisms which we call it as the uh, as the urihaline are um, there are many kinds of the fishes are organisms which call as the urethermal they can tolerate the extreme environmental condition in the form of temperature they can tolerate extreme environmental condition in the form of the salt concentration such as we do have the examples of the uh, salmon uh, which uh, which uh, which is a anadromous fish 
then we do have the example of the atlantic eel which is a catadromous fish it moves from the the eel moves from the fresh water to uh, sea water where a salmon moves from the sea water to the fresh water but they they uh, undergo certain physiological changes to get into those very different kinds of the waters then uh, we have the zonation of the lakes as well the lake is also divided into different kinds of the zone that very zone which is which is covered with the vegetation up to which the vegetation is present we call this very area as the littoral zone this very area up to which whether the emergent vegetation whether the submerged vegetation or whether the um, whether the floating vegetation or whether the submerged vegetation is present this very zone is the uh, littoral zone the open water area this very zone this is the open water area away from the vegetated uh, you can say rooted plants we call this very area as the limnatic zone and this this very zone where there is no light or the deeper portion we call it as the profundal zone and uh, um, on the basis of the temperature also it can be categorized into the uh, the epilimnian upper zone then the metalimnian um, metal thermocline or the metalimnian the zone between the epilimnian and the hypolimnian and the hypolimnian is called the lower most you can say um, water strata it is based on the difference in the temperature so these very zones are based on the different uh, you can say um, zones of temperature and similarly this can also be divided on the basis of the photic and the aphotic zone so up to which the light penetrates it is a photic zone and um, below the photic zone it is a photic zone and different kinds of zones almost uh, have different kinds of the organisms to live in so that it become different niche of an organism to live in so as to reduce the competition now moving on to terrestrial habitat we have different kinds of terrestrial habitats we do, we do have the we do have the polar regions we do have the forest ecosystem we do have the temperate we do have the desert we do have the rainforest we do have, we do have different kinds of the terrestrial ecosystem as, uh, as well so um, the terrestrial ecosystems many a times are uh, yeah, we do have the rainforest we do have the desert ecosystem we do deciduous forest coniferous forest tundra and uh, and the ice that is the polar uh, polar so um, our whole terrestrial environment is divided into different kinds of the habitats for the different kinds of the organisms to live in a species habitat is that very place where the species can find food shelter production and protection and mate for reproduction actually when we when we uh, study ecology we see that um, each and every organism has struggles for only three things it is the food first of all first requirement is the food and the second requirement um, is uh, the shelter and the third requirement is mate for the reproduction so these three uh, things uh, are should be there in a particular habitat so that animal can comfortably live in but these very um, this very habitat is characterized by the both physical and the biological features now when we when we say physical factors what physical factors actually do um, do have an impact on a habitat so there are many physical factors uh, the soil the nature of the soil present the nature of the soil present the moisture present the temperature what kind of temperature this very habitat has whether the organism can tolerate that very kind of temperature or not then the what kind of light in intensity that very habitat has then ph pH it can be the pH of the soil it can be pH in the case of the water as well then turbidity in the case of water dissolution in the case of water these are the various kinds of physical factors which mark an impact on the habitat and these are the decisive factors whether the organism can survive or can able to tolerate all these very conditions or not in a particular kind of habitat then there are certain biotic factors also which which mark an impact on the habitat <coughs> in the selection of a habitat that includes the availability of the food presence or absence of the predators competitors and then the presence of the parasites and diseases in a particular area also marks an impact on the selection of a particular kind of habitat by the organism so by the by categorizing the terrestrial habitats into the different geographic types we do have the polar as i told you polar deciduous temperate tropical subtropical rainforest and then we do have the deserts 
so we do have different kinds of habitats uh, in which different kinds of organisms do live in and in the freshwater habitat we do have the marshes we do have the streams we do have the rivers lakes ponds then marine habitats we do have the salt marshes we do have the coast we do have the intertidal zone we do have the estuaries we do have the reefs we do have the bay we do have the open sea we do sea bed we deep water and uh, we do we also have the submarine vents as i told you in the case of the in the case of extreme habitat then uh, these this was all about the habitat now what is a niche actually what is the niche the term niche was uh, first uh, coined by the uh, grinnell in 1971 it is actually the role or function of an organism in the biotic community now what role it plays in a biotic community it includes the trophic level so on the basis of the food now see the role what kind of actor this very organism is whether it is actor in terms of uh, in terms of selection of nest on the basis of the uh, feeding whether uh, it selects a foraging location whether it feeds on canopy mid story or ground and what it eats it eats insects or the seeds or what size of the food it eats it eats large or small seed and when it eats whether it um, it is a diurnal or it is a nocturnal or where it finds shelter how it responds to the abiotic factors and where it nests these are actually the factors which determine the niche of an organism now um, this very term niche term niche is it is actually uh, defined on three bases one definition was uh, is called as the ecological um, niche what is the ecological niche the position in organism fills in its environment so this is the common definition of the niche that if habitat is the place and the habit this very niche is the profession and this very when we talk about the ecological niche it is the position an organism fills in the environment and eltonian niche is generally commonly used that it is the role of the species in a community or its job or profession so ecological niche is the position it fills in the environment its position in the environment its position in the habitat eltonian niche its job or profession and thirdly we do we do have one more definition given by the hutchinson it is the range of conditions and the resource availabilities within which individual or species persist let us have a little bit of idea about the three aspects of the ecological niche which are designated as <clears throat> the space uh, special niche partitioning what actually happen happens during the special niche partitioning that that the niche is divided into different kinds of the habitats that is why it is called a special or habitat niche that if these are the these belong to different kinds of species they occupy the different you can say zones so that they can reduce the competition this occupied the long grass area short grass area then shrub area and the trees area so this is a sitantunga puku levi and water bug they occupy different different habitats within a habitat so as to reduce the competition that is why this is called as a special niche partitioning now what actually we are seeing here in the in the second case the trophic niche the trophic it it is related to the feeding it is related to feeding so what actually is being done that this very flamingo it as i have i have discussed this in the earlier slide as well that uh, this very flamingo flamingo this feeds by straining the mud uh, through the bill and this very dabbling duck it feeds on the plant and this very avocet it feeds on the insect and then the oyster catchers it feeds on the shell of the uh, you can say uh, birds and then if there is some other organism such as plover it hunts on the small insects so they are living in a particular kind of habitat or particular niche but they have uh, they have um, they have um, they have um, differentiated themselves according to different feeding habits now that is why it is called a trophic niche 
so one is multi dimensional or the hyper volume niche so when we take two or more factors into consideration for the selection of a niche it becomes the multi dimensional or hyper volume niche for example if um, it, there is a there is a there is an organism which particularly selects a particular kind of the range of temperature for example this is the range of the temperature where the organism survives and this is the this is the current flow so this very organism lives in that very place where the flow of the current and the temperature they are optimum for that very organism to live or the place where the temperature and the humidity they are at opti optimum le um, level for that very organism to live so another term uh, we um, usually across uh, come across um, while studying the uh, niche it is the niche width and the niche overlap so what is actually the niche width for example there is species j and there is species k the species j occupies a niche from this very point to this very point so the this is this is the actually the breadth of the niche of the species j this very point actually i will uh, i will just define this with the help of the green so this is the green one this is the niche width or niche breadth of the species j and this is the niche width this is the niche width of species k but this is there is a point where in these two niches overlap so we, this is called as the niche overlap this is called the niche overlap mostly mostly what happens in the in ecology that usually there is a niche overlap between the two competitors but this is this is of negligible significance because usually the rivals do not meet our rivals meet occasionally and whenever they meet there is a little bit of you can say tension in those very organisms where they try to trespass each others uh, you can say niche uh, basically it happens in the case of territory if the organism is territorial now what is um, there is there are two different uh, you can say definitions uh, one is uh, the fundamental niche and one is realized niche now uh, fundamental niche and the realized niche now students uh, i will just make it easy for you that for example in a place where you live in there is no competitor there is no competitor for an organism the organism can thrive there independently the organism can reproduce organism ha is has does not ha have to counter any kind of disease predator or any abiotic or physical uh, chemical factor or physical factor each and every thing is very nice the organism is growing day by day the organism is increasing its population day by day there is no hindrance to it but keep in mind that this very fundamental niche is only a theoretical one this can be present in theory only but this cannot be practically present so but what is a realized niche so realized niche is the particular niche of an organism where the organism has to face all the physical as well as the abiotic uh, abiotic as well as the biotic factors it has to compete it has to cope up with the predator it has to escape from the predator it has to search for the prey it has to uh, it has to face the disease it has to face the competition so one is the fundamental niche and other is the realized niche uh, now let us have a little bit of differentiation what we will uh, learn from this very fundamental and realized niche the niche of an, the fundament in the fundamental niche the niche of an organism given that there is no limiting factor the i told you that there is nothing limiting factor no limiting factor on the environment or resource the organism <clears throat> can use now realized niche the niche that is occupied a viable population of a species in the presence of competitor species now here in this very case fundamental niche there is no limiting factor but here the, it has to face the competition it has to face everything this is also called as the fundamental niche is also called pre competitive niche whereas it is called as the realized niche is called as the post competitive niche this is a theoretical one fundamental niche is theoretical niche whereas the realized niche is actually the niche where the organism lives this fundamental niche is large in size whereas the realized niche is is very small in size this fundamental niche elaborates on various rules of the particular species 
but in the realized niche it elaborates on what species actually do and in the fundamental niche there is no competition either for the resources neither for the um, nor for resources neither for resource nor for the predator but in the case of uh, realized niche the, there occurs the competition for both resources as well as the predators for example in this very diagram what we are seeing here in this very diagram that there is a um, thamulus barnacle which can live both in the deep and shallow intertidal zone so it can it is living here you are seeing that the population of this very barnacle is increasing day by day and after occupying this very zone that is the lower tide zone it is it is moving towards the high tide zone because there is no competition there is no predator there is no you can say disease there is no competition there is everything um, physical factor as well as biotic factor they are they are in conformity but in the case of uh, when it comes to the you can say competition for example uh, along with the balanus the if the second species that is the balanus is now present here what happens that this very uh, thalam, thalamus this special range forcing it to occupy a higher drier zone so this in the presence of this very competition now what is the competition here now here the balanus is competition now which was absent here the balanus was a, a competitor was absent in the case of the fundamental niche but it is present in the case of realized niche and this forces this very barnacle that is uh, that is uh, thalamus uh, towards the high tide zone and thus this very barnacle this uh, balanus occupies the lower zone which is very much you can say tolerable which is very much feasible for this very balanus to live in it occupies a more comfortable zone for its whereas it pushes the thalamus toward the higher tide, tide zone so this is the basically difference between the fundamental and realized niche when you have no competition it is a fundamental niche but this can be present in theory only and the realized niche is actually the niche where you live in that is you you have to face the competitors you have to face the predators you have to face the disease you have to face many a times different kinds of the you can say untoward incidents now this is the niche this is a very interesting one that it is the dish which can make the organism a generalist or a specialist now what is what are generalist and what are specialist for example we say specialist are those very organism which which occupy a narrow space which occupy a narrow niche Whereas generalists are those very organisms which can occupy a larger, you can say, broader niche area. Now, how you are going to, you are going to, you can say, understand that what generalist and the specialist are. For example, we will, we will discuss it by uh, the examples. For example, we do have, we do have the uh, this very cola bear here. Uh, cola bear and panda here we all know that they are they are um, they have a particular habitat for which they are specialized to live in so they are not adapted to live in the uh, habitat which is having a um, um, biotic or abiotic factors uh, not at par with those very that very environment in which they are living so they are not able to tolerate the um, in, uh, e either the little bit of variation in temperature or mostly the food they are not going to find the food which is available in their in their habitat for example there are certain you can say shrews and uh, you can say other organisms which are regarded as generalist now why these are regarded as specialist because they have they have the uh, narrow narrow niche they are less adaptable to the uh, adaptable because of the specialized needs now what are their specialized needs for example it feeds on the bamboo or it feeds on the, um, on the certain food items which are particularly specialized to that very place then um, the, they are more likely to become extinct so one more thing is there that that they are already endangered species and they are more likely to become extinct and use specific set of the resources and usually affected by the changing condition and have advantage when the conditions are more constant so they um, they have the great they don't have the greater tolerance range simple the specialists don't have the greater tolerance range and they are very much you can say intolerable uh, they cannot tolerate the extremities in the temperature whereas generalist uh, generalist they can tolerate the extreme environmental tem temperatures they are they are uh, they, they can switch over to the different kinds of the uh, foods they can tolerate high range of um, temperature they can uh, they can um, have the greater variety of the uh, 
use greater variety of resources they can switch on to different other food if their their particular food is not available so this is making them the uh, the specialist and the generalist for example this is the this is the graph or the peak showing that of the uh, specialist it is a narrow uh, narrow niche whereas in the case of generalist it is a, it is a niche breadth is greater though there can be a niche overlap but the niche is narrower in the case of specialist whereas it is broader in the case of uh, the uh, you can say general now one thing is more um, there that is the competitive exclusion principle yes we all know that each and every organism tries to reduce the competition by switching on to some other you can say um, kind of the niche kind of the food and feeding habit kind of the you can say micro habitat or um, or uh, um, or is adapted to uh, some other kind of the you can say resource for example if we take an example here that um, p aurelia that is paramecium aurelia it can grow it can uh, grow easily if it is raised independently the similarly in the case of paramecium caudatum it it also grows and in a, in a culture medium very nicely if it is um, cultured alone but when these two uh, organisms are cultured together then what happens that one of the species is eliminated is excluded so one species is unable to tolerate the presence of the other species so what happens in this very case that this very paramecium aurelia it adapts itself nicely better than that of the paramecium caudatum now what happens to the paramecium caudatum it excludes so this is the um, this is the um, you can say competitive um, uh, exclusion principle where one species is not able to tolerate the presence of the other species so this is actually this was actually the fundamental now here comes because it is a laboratory condition that here actually what happens that paramecium or um, for the paramecium aurelia we gave it a fundamental niche paramecium caudatum we gave it a fundamental niche but when it comes to the realized niche only one is able to survive or one is um, is excluded that is why it is called as the uh, competitive exclusion principle another thing what we interestingly study in the uh, niche is resource partitioning because in the er, in the earlier chapter i have told you about the different kinds of wabblers who occupied the the different who they partition their resources actually and, and this also happened in the case of other uh, you can say finches um, that some of them occupied the top most um, portion of the tree some occupied the um, below the top uh, most portion some occupied the middle some occupied the inner and some occupied the outer so as to reduce the competition and similarly i i gave you the example that uh, they utilize different resources within niche for example i talked about the flamingo which fed on by straining and um, straining the mud through the bill then i talked about the dabbling duck which fed on the plants uh, in the same uh, same ecological niche and avocets which fed on the insects the oyster catchers on the shells and the plovers they hunt on the uh, small insect that is why they partitioned their resources so as to reduce the competition so this is this is also one of the interesting thing done by the animals to reduce the competition now what are the advantages of the ecological niche what are the advantages why do animals form the ecological niche actually the animal can escape competition by occupying the first thing uh, first thing that um, that um, is that they escape competition by occupying the different ecological niche they usually escape the competition and secondly the ecological niche occupied by species is favorable so whatsoever favorable kind of the niche they usually find they try to occupy that very you can say ecological niche and thirdly the segregation of the organism into niches avoids confusion so um, avoidance of the confusion is there and then the segregation of the different species in the particular niche results in the full exploitation of all the resources now um, i usually uh, give an example that for example there are two uh, species of the frogs uh, in in a pond in a pond um, now how do they reduce if they occupy the same ecological niche there will be competition then how will they reduce the competition so what they did that one of them occupied the uh, middle that is the limnatic zone of the lake or or the or the pond and other occupied the littoral zone so this is this is the one type of the avoiding the competition the second the second is that 
to become uh, among the species whether any kind of species for example if the uh, two species are occupying this similar kind of the habit uh, niche same niche even though they can reduce the competition by becoming the diurnal or nocturnal so one uh, one will hunt in the night and other will hunt in the day so the, this way they also can reduce the competition thirdly for example they can also reduce the competition by having the different kinds of breeding seasons they can they can uh, reduce the competition by uh, by uh, having the different kinds of uh, breeding seasons by occupying by having different kinds of the food uh, by having different kinds of you can say substrates to live in by having different kinds of zones to live in by um, by becoming nocturnal or um, you can say diurnal by uh, by um, you can say by partitioning of the uh, resource as well so these are all the things by which the organism reduces the competition hope you enjoyed this very lecture uh, that is the what is difference between the habitat and what is difference uh, between the habitat and the niche what actually the habitat is and what is the niche for so kindly um, subscribe and uh, like my channel for the new lectures in the coming series thank you very much